of the fluid flow. Well, fluid would go from the pure water side through to the side with more sodium chloride on it. The name given to this process is osmosis. And if we left this to run for an hour or two hours, then we would find that the fluid level had changed. So the fluid would have gone from there to there, and that level would have raised. And because fluid had gone from there to there, the level here would have dropped. So there would be a net movement of fluid from here to here, lowering this side and increasing that one. If this solution had been only 0 0.9 instead of 5%, the whole thing would have still happened, but slower, and the overall fluid change would have been less. So movement of water across the membrane under the influence of osmotic pressure. So now let's go back to our original demonstration and see if we can illustrate this in the real situation. So here we are again later at the demonstration and uh, let's remind ourselves of the setup. This was the side that contained sugar and water. This was the side that contained pure water and the semi permeable membrane in between. I think you can see that the pure water side, the level has dropped a little bit. Let me do that in a different colour. Gone to there. Not a great difference, but it's, there's a difference there. And as you would expect, consequently, the level on the side with the sugar has risen a little bit. That's actually quite a good, uh, good demonstration there. So the pure water has moved from here across the semi permeable membrane to water down the solution containing the glucose. Osmosis has watered it down. Or to think about it another way, the sugar has sucked the water through under the influence of osmotic pressure. The last thing I want to use to illustrate osmosis is uh, red, bl red blood cells. Let's imagine we have uh, a tub here and it contains pure water. And into that we put some red blood cells. Now red blood cells normally uh, are found in plasma of course. And that means the osmotic pressure inside the red blood cell must be the same as the osmotic pressure in the plasma. Otherwise, there'd be a net movement of water in and out of the cell. So this is pure water. In other words, it's a hypotonic solution. So hypotonic solution there. Red blood cells in pure water. Inside the cell, remember, there is 0.9% sodium chloride, or at least the equivalent osmotic um, properties, the same, the same level of osmosis. Now, where is there more water? Here or here? Well, some of the space that would be taken up by water inside the red cell is taken up by osmotic molecules. So it means there's more water here than there is here. Osmosis waters down. So what movement, what, in what direction will there be a net movement of water? Well, there's more water here than here, therefore water will diffuse by osmosis into the red cells. 
This means that the red cells will blow up and eventually they'd probably burst. So you can see that if you're giving someone intravenous therapy, it's a very good idea not to give them pure water. When we're giving IV therapy, we give an isotonic solution of 0.9% saline. And this is why. Because the pure water will water down the osmotic molecules in the red cell and blow the red cells up. That would be called hemolysis, hemolysis. Let's think about another situation. Let's think about a situation where we've got water and we've got 0.9% saline in it. Therefore, we would have an isotonic solution. And, in fact, that's what we've got in plasma. Plasma is isotonic. So this time we've got the same red cells, or some more red cells, in an isotonic solution. Now, what is the osmotic potential inside the red cell? Well, I've already said it's the equivalent of 0.9% saline. So where is there more water? Inside the red cells or in the medium? Well, the answer is the same. The osmotic pressure will be the same here as here. So there'll still be a rapid interchange of water molecules, but there'll be the same number going out as going in, because the osmotic pressure is the same on both sides of the membrane. Let's think about a third situation. Let's think about sodium chloride plus, sorry, water plus 5% salt, 5% sodium chloride. That's more sodium chloride than there would normally be in plasma, therefore that is a hypertonic medium. A hypertonic medium. So let's think about the same red cells in that situation. Well, we know that in the cells there's 0.9% saline or the equivalent. So now, where is there more water? Is there more water in the red cells or is there more water in the medium? Well, more of the medium is taken up with saline. Therefore, there's relatively more water in the cells than there is in the medium. What does osmosis do? Well, osmosis waters down. So there's going to be movement from the more watery environment to the less watery environment. In other words, there's going to be a net movement of water out of the cells to try and dilute the 5% saline. That means that the cells are going to dehydrate, they're going to lose all the fluid and the result will be small crinkled cells, dehydrated wooden cells. So attention to the osmotic properties of intravenous fluid absolutely vital because of these reasons. What we're going to look at now. So here